Hello, my name is Katie Treadway, and I am the Head of Regulatory Affairs at One Energy. Today we're here to give you a tour of the North Finley Wind Campus. We love giving tours of the Wind Campus to people in the community, whether it's investors, community groups, or it's school kids. And we want you to have the same experience through video as the people who come here have at the North Finley Wind Campus. So today, to give you a tour of the campus, is Chelsea Bum, who is a project manager here at One Energy. Enjoy your tour. Welcome to the North Finley Wind Campus. My name is Chelsea Bum. I'm a project manager here at One Energy, and I have the honor and privilege of taking you on a virtual tour of the North Finley Wind Campus today. We're going to see some really, really cool stuff on this tour. We're going to see a training tower, we're going to see some tools, we're going to see some equipment, we're going to see some rigging, we're going to see some components on the ground before they're built. And the last part of the tour is definitely the part to be the most excited about. We're actually going to climb a turbine. Justin and Carrie are going to be taking you on your climb, but other than that, let's go ahead and get started. So on our first stop on this tour, right behind me you'll see the training tower. This training tower is One Energy's tool to be able to train local response author rescue authorities um, as well as One Energy's employees and other contractors that build wind turbines. It's a really, really neat course um, where we use different rescue scenarios to be able to simulate what a real rescue would look like if we were to have a tower emergency on one of our sites or one of the other contractor sites. So moving on to our next stop. Hello again. We're here at destination three on the tour, which we like to refer to as the pallet and tote yard. This yard is kind of a huge part of what I've done here at One Energy. You look around and you notice rows of totes and pallets. And it might not look like a lot to you as a viewer, but it's kind of what's made us successful as a construction company. We've taken some really complicated tasks and we've broken up everything so that there's a specific toolkit for it. And so you'll notice that these rows have themes to them. One of the rows is for the civil team, one of the rows is for the foundation team, one of the rows is for the erection team, one of the rows is for electrical, and one of the rows is for operations. And so with us having all of that laid out, it's very easy for us to mobilize and demobilize from sites. Um, as a self-performed construction crew, we're a lot smaller than what would be a hundred wind turbine project like you'd see with some other massive contractors. We do between generally between one and ten turbines at a time, which means we need to outfit our crews differently. And so this is how we've, we've been able to accomplish that. And we're actually really, really proud of this part of our business. Moving on to the next stop. Okay. So now we're at the coolest part of the tour, for sure. If you look around, you can kind of see a lot of really big components on the ground. And so this guy back here, this white tarped 100,000 pound monster, that's our generator. Our generator is pretty different from what a normal generator would be. So generally when you see a turbine out in the, out in the wild, you're going to notice that it looks like a big school bus. It's got a gearbox, it's really, really heavy and large and cumbersome. If you look at our turbines, they're a lot more compact. And that's because the generator is a permanent magnet direct drive generator, which means that it's much smaller and it has the ability to induce current through magnets. And so that's one of the really cool things about what we do is we're building state-of-the-art machines here at the North Finley Wind Campus. Behind the generators, is the nacelles and they're kind of hard to see. We have to tarp all of the components to keep the water, you know, out of them and just to make sure that they're they're properly maintained while they're here. We've got proper drainage, etc. the list goes on. But that's kind of the brains of the upper part of the tower. And so the way that a turbine's built, you have tower sections. You've got the nacelle that sits on top of that. And so we run cables up the tower to the nacelle. The nacelle has controls like a control box up there that will yaw and pitch blades and does all of that heavy lifting for the turbine. The other place that we have brains in the turbine is kind of right when you walk in and you'll see that later on in the tour that there's a big converter there and it has the PLC and all of the technology that you need to run the turbine properly. And so 
When you're with Justin and Carrie, you'll get an actual inside view of what that nacelle looks like. And so don't worry that you're not seeing it here. You will see it there. And the other part that's much easier to see on the ground is the blade. The blade's about 140 feet long and it's made of fiberglass. And so it's like a 90% fiberglass composite with some balsa wood and you know some steel in there. But you'll notice when I touch this, then it moves and they flex a whole, whole lot. And so when we're talking about, when we're talking about blades, you're talking about affixing it to a tower. If this is your tower, your blades are actually gonna be off about three degrees because when the wind blows, they flex a lot. And so generally that number is somewhere about, you know, when the wind's blowing really, really hard, those blades can flex up to like eight feet. It's quite a bit. And so we don't ever want the blades to hit a tower. And so we put it at a three degree offset. It's not optimal for wind speeds. It's not optimal for the machine, but we want these turbines to be safe and manageable for their lifetime. And so now if you have just a second, we'll go check out the root of the blade. So this is what we call the root of the blade. The tip was the part that we just looked at. And so this is really cool because this is the part where you see into the hub. Very few people ever get to enter a hub after it's built. But if you do, there's like next to no space. You're kind of cramped in it. You'll notice that when we store these, we have little caps. These caps are to keep water out of the blades, out of those holes to prevent corrosion. There's also a little door for access in the actual blade itself. We don't, as One Energy, go into the blades because it's a confined space. And so we wanna be really, really careful about what kind of training and what kind of people are going into the blades. Um, but yeah, it's really, really cool, obviously. And they're big, so it's super fun to build these. But yeah, so the next stop on our tour, we're gonna to check out the converters. So we're almost done with the tour, but we're not quite done yet. If you look behind me, you see all kinds of connexes. And so these connexes house all kinds of things that come with the turbines from wherever they come in the world. And so connexes house things like instrumentation, cables for inside the towers, they, they house the converters themselves. And so a lot of our job is getting the offload from whatever ship they come on, bringing it here, and then moving them to job sites and shaking out these connexes. And so, it's kind of a short little blip on the tour, but we're gonna go check out the electrical BOP stuff next. One Energy's kind of adapted the Toyota way to fit what we use here today. So a lot of the things we've seen in the yard thus far are indicative of trying to plan and set up our supply chain so that we can go to projects just in time. So behind me, we have what we call BOP or balance of plant components. And so balance of plant is defined as anything that supports the turbine, whether that's collection line or switches or transformers or the foundation, the anchor bolts, any of those things are considered balance of plant operations. The access road, the crane pad, all balance of plant. And so one of the things that we do here at One Energy is we try to make sure that we have all of these electrical components here, not just for construction, but also in case something goes wrong during the operations of a turbine. The last thing we want is for us to blow a fuse in a transformer and not have something that we can quickly and readily replace for the customer on a very quick basis. And so it allows us to quickly address it problems on the job sites. It allows us to pull from our yard during construction. So it cuts down on construction time and it cuts down on downtime. So now we're gonna go ahead and move on. I'm happy to announce we've made it to the hub part of the tour. Behind me, you can see what one of our hubs looks like. This particular hub currently has the nose cone on the top. That gets sealed with caulk just for water protection. And then you can see where the blades actually get installed in the cutouts, those circular cutouts. There's three cutouts where each of the blades is installed. Here at One Energy, we install the hub as a single assembly, meaning that we build the entire rotor on the ground and then we fly it up in one piece. So other, other contractors occasionally will build it in what we call single blade erection, where you'll put the hub up 
then you'll put a blade, and then follow with the other two blades. That's generally cognitive of some topography or the rotor is really, really large, your crane can only do so much capacity. There's a lot of governing factors. But for us, to be able to build it in one piece is a really, really nice perk of the job. Inside the hub, there's a pitch system for each blade. So the pitch system on the inside will actually rotate the blade depending on what wind speed the turbine is currently seeing at that time. So there's instrumentation on the top of the nacelle. It tells the, it tells the computer in the, in the turbine what the wind speed is and what the blade should be doing. It also gives a relative direction of where the wind's coming from. So the whole rotor will turn into the wind, pitch to the optimal degree, and then spin accordingly. So for our particular rotors, we're looking for 16 RPM at an optimal, at, at an optimal rate. So 16 rotations per minute is what we always search for when we're trying to get the best bang for our buck, bring in the most money, and produce the most energy. So again, it'll pitch inside. Some really cool parts of the hub. It's really a, a wonderful mechanical piece. And so it's one of the coolest things to see flying it, uh, installing it, and then seeing it in operation. You actually have to lock the hub out to enter it from the generator in the cell. There's a tiny little door that you have to crawl through from the cell through the generator into the hub to be able to get into the hub. So it's really, really interesting. But I guess I won't take up too much more of your time here. We'll hopefully see more of that on the, on the turbine tour later. On to the next thing. We made it to the end of the tour. So behind me, you can see an operational turbine. So this turbine, just to give you a little bit of perspective on how we build. So it's four tower sections. You can kind of see some horizontal seams. Those are the weldments. And each weldment is about 10 feet apart. Then you get up to the top and you see that nacelle. The nacelle has a cool logo on it. We put a lot of our company's logos on them per their request. And then on the front face of that nacelle, you see the generator. Generator doesn't look like it weighs 100,000 pounds, but it certainly does. Then you see the hub, which is the fixture that has all three blades on it, and then each individual blade. And so the next part of this is probably what you've all been waiting for. We're actually gonna start that tour of the inside. So we've made it to the base of a turbine. If you look behind me, Working from the bottom up, what you don't see is there's a 60 foot foundation below us. That's 60 feet in diameter, and that's what we call the base. Then on top of the base, we pour another pedestal. So it's only about seven foot deep between the base and the pedestal, but there's about 300 yards of concrete there. So in the pedestal concrete and the base concrete, there's what we call an anchor bolt cage. So that anchor bolt cage all you see after it's constructed are these blue anchor bolts that pop through. They are actually blue. We paint them for anti-corrosive um, so that they don't corrode over time. But around the top, you'll notice that there's numbers above the anchor bolts. Probably kind of hard to see. They fade over time. But these are what we call post-tension bolts. So these bolts we actually stretch using post-tensioning techniques rather than torque using torsional techniques. So also you'll notice there's the megawatt scholarships. For every turbine that we build, we give out a $5,000 scholarship annually to a STEM student graduating high school. Additionally, you'll notice there's a louver here. That louver underneath the stairs might be kind of hard to see from this angle, but that louver blows air out. And I'll show you more when we get inside the tower. Now on the other side of the tower, or most towers, you're gonna to notice there's a step-up transformer. And that step-up transformer takes whatever voltage the turbine has and will step it up to whatever the grid voltage is. So we do distributed energy, which basically means that we connect at all different kinds of, of grid voltages. For this particular project that we're at here, it's 34.5 kV. And so now we're gonna go ahead and head inside. made it. You're now inside a turbine. How exciting is that? So when we came in here, you noticed how well lit it was. I have 
a great view inside of this tower. Something that's very, very special to these turbines is we picked out very bright lights. I've been in turbines where it feels like it's bar lighting, really dim bar lighting. And so I do want to highlight how well lit these towers are. A um, couple of other really cool things. One Energy actually took over the internal design on these towers like five or six years ago. We did that because we're a really innovative company. We like adapting and changing and trying to make things better. And at the time, you know, a lot of companies weren't offering the bigger, better thing. And so we said, let's do it ourselves. Let's make these turbines as nice as we want to, as nice as they are. And so a couple of things that we didn't do, you'll notice these cabinets here. This is what we call the converter. Up above, there's actually quite a few pieces to this whole setup. We're not going to be able to go into the basement today because there's actually an arc flash hazard. We would have to totally de-energize to go into the basement, but I'm going to highlight what I can here from this deck. And so in the basement, there's a transformer piece. That transformer runs all of your low voltage transforming that needs to happen to your power. And so things like the yaw motors and the pitch motors and the top box and some of the, some of the brains in the converter, they run from that transformer in the basement. Right above the transformer in the basement is the reactor bracket. It's where all the IGBT connections are made. That's where, that's where everything is connected. And so that's where that arc flash kind of comes from. Circuit breaker one, which connects to the power that's incoming from the grid. That's where circuit breaker one is. And whenever circuit breaker one trips, there's an arc flash hazard. So you'll notice on this deck that we're standing on real diamond plate and when we zoomed out from above, it was great. It was an actual great. Not great, because it's great, but it was a great. <laughs> and so um, the reason why this is diamond plate is because we want to protect people on this, on this level. We want to make sure that if there is an arc inc incident, they're separated from that. So that's why we have diamond plate here. The other parts of this, so we talked about the converter cabinet. And this is where, when power comes in, it comes in wild AC, okay? It comes down tower, wild AC, through the cables, comes into the reactor and, and through the transformer and all that good stuff, but it comes up here to this converter cabinet. And this is where the real genius of the wind industry is made. And these cabinets over here, you'll notice they say IGBT cabinet. So an IGBT cabinet is a really, an IGBT is a really fast acting switch. Basically what that does is we do a full power conversion in these cabinets. So we take the power from wild AC back to DC, then to AC that's ready to head to the grid. From, the, from there, we send it through our transformer, our step up transformer, and it'll step it up to whatever voltage we need it to go to at that particular service entrance to the plant in this case, in all cases. And so, it's very unique. IGBTs really changed the way the wind industry works. And it's, it's just a really, really neat, simplistic process that people tend to overthink. So above the IGBT cabinet, you'll see a series of fans and heaters. And so these turbines are passively cooled, basically meaning that we're drawing air from the top of the turbine to an axial fan in the basement. And I showed you that louver outside when we were pointing out some cool things about the outsides of the tower. That louver blows air from the top all the way out. So there's constant airflow. That's also why above us, we have open grates. And so those decks, you can see through. It's wonderful for construction. We can have conversations top to bottom. Um, in a normal tower where it's diamond plate on every deck, it sounds kind of like a church organ where it echoes, it's kind of like an amphitheater on every level. But it's really, really nice to have the open grates for many reasons, whether it's airflow, whether it's to talk to one another, whether it's to get better lighting. That's one of the reasons why we made that swap. Some of the other cool things about our towers that are unique and different, if you look at this blue line, people always want to know what that is. And so something that we've added to our turbines is a pneumatic system, largely because a lot of the wind industry uses hydraulic tools. And here, 
we thought pneumatic tools are much lighter, easier to pack, easier to get around, and in a lot of cases more mobile because hydraulic tools are very heavy. And so we put in this air system where we hook in a Chicago fitting and then on every deck we have a valve, like a ball valve. We could open them up. These connect to an air compressor that we keep on our service trucks. And basically we can have air tools whenever we want on any deck all the way from the bottom to the top. And so it's been a really, really nice feature. Um, another cool thing that we did, this whole rail system that we have, we call it a rail system. A lot of places, a lot of the wind industry uses bus bars. A lot of the wind industries uses different types of bracketing for their, their cabling coming down. But these cables just have a simple cable clamp. But the real genius behind the cabling system is that you'll notice that there's there's holes and a rail and we can custom fit a lot of things to those rail pieces and so we have a clip basically we call them rail clips and you'll notice at different parts of the tower when you're climbing with Justin and Carrie that they're on both sides of the ladder and so we can do custom fit pieces and we can retrofit and make this tower kind of unique and different based on what the needs of this tower are. A um, couple other things that are probably worth mentioning. We, run, we have designed our own electrical boxes to run to each deck. Every deck has 120 volts. Every deck has 240 volts. Um, every deck basically has a connection for the lights. So we can do a lot at each deck. Um, trying to think if there's anything else that's really worth mentioning. Oh yeah, this ladder. So this ladder is steel. It's a steel rung ladder very, very robust. Um, we can tie off for this for rescue scenarios. We can do a lot of really cool and unique things with this ladder. A lot of ladders in the wind industry are aluminum and they're really flimsy rung to rung and you can't use them as permanent tie offs. Because if you fell, you'd rip out an aluminum rung and it wouldn't end well potentially. For these, we can safely tie off to each rung, we can safely tie off to the sides, um, and we feel really, really safe on this ladder. Now, you'll notice that there's a climb cable in, on the other side of it. This climbing cable is what we use to connect our cable grab when we climb. When you're in a wind turbine, you're always tied off or you're either in a safe area. And so, when you get to a deck, you're tied off, until you tie off to something else. And then once the gate's closed, you can safely unclip. And you'll see a lot of that with Carrie and Justin when they do climb. But apart from that, that's what the inside of a wind turbine looks like here at One Energy. So please, if there's anything else that we can do for you while you're here, let us know. All right, we're ready for the climb now. I have the pleasure of introducing you to two of our technicians, Justin Bruns and Carrie Gaines. They're gonna be taking you on the next leg of this tour. Go Let's ahead, go. guys. <laughs> All right, guys. So like Chelsea said, this is time for the coolest part of your tour of North Finley Wing Campus. Uh, we are going for the climb and you know, it's gonna be great. Real so, great. <laughs> Here we go. The first thing that you need to know about when you're climbing a turbine is it's all about safety. Um, I know you just saw me hook what we call our sister hooks up to a tie off point. And then I hook our lad safe up to the safety cable. Um, you always want to be completely 100% tied off the whole time you were getting on and off the ladder or climbing. So um, we kind of go deck to deck, like you see hooked up to the safety cable. And then when you get off at a deck, again, you want to use your sister hooks, latch on to one of our tie off points, take your lads off, off the, lad safe off the safety cable and then hop off onto the deck. If uh, someone above you were to drop something, they would yell either headache or rock. And you know, it's kind of a funny thing because your first instinct when you hear something like that is to look up. Um, no, you know, you don't want to do that here. You hear somebody yelling that and you want to look down and just protect your head and your neck as much as you can. Try to make yourself as small as possible. Um, here you can see our bolts. 
Um, you can see some of the torque marks on them. We mark them every time we do a 10% or 100%. Yeah, and like Chelsea was saying, outside, these are different from the anchor bolts. The anchor bolts, we actually do a tensioning procedure. This actually is a torquing procedure, and we do those torque marks just so when we do our checks, we can see if the bolts have actually moved or not. These are those cables uh, running up the tower. How Chelsea said that we don't use a bus bar system. We have individual cables. And there goes Justin doing his thing. Look at him. This is how I get up the tower, super fast. <laughs> Here's our, uh, what we call a snowflake. They separate all 12 cables and then our support arms to keep everything out in the middle as the whole uh, nacelle actually rotates around the tower. Yep, and it is, those snowflakes are actually really important because as the nacelle does rotate or yaw, it keeps, like Justin said, keeps the cables separate so they aren't getting all tangled up. That would be a huge problem. And then here off to the right, um, you'll see some anchors. Uh, we actually lay all of our cables out um, beforehand. They're all pre-cut. Um, they all get laid out and then attached there for a cable drop, um, which we'll do after everything is erected. And uh, they'll go down one by one and then they'll individually lay them in and clamp them to all the uh, horizontal braces and the cable clamps. So these are 12 cables for the generator and there are three auxiliary cables for communication and then for auxiliary power. And then here on the right, you can see the uh, Chicago fitting that Chelsea was talking about for the air supply and the ball valve. So now guys, this is what we call the yaw deck. And I do want to just kind of mention we did skip a couple decks in between just so you guys didn't have to put up with us for the whole 15 minute climb. That's usually how long it takes us to get to the top, between 10 and 15 minutes, unless you're like Justin who's speedy. Um, but right now, all the way at the top, we are probably around 265 feet. Um, off the ground, so it's uh, it's a workout. We're, it's up there. There you can see one of our uh, torque sheets. Uh, we write our serial number down for the uh, machine and the uh, regulator that we use, since it's air, and then uh, the date and then who did it. And then here is our tower power box. You can see our emergency lights in case power were to go out. We can still see we're required to carry a light with us at all times. And then also on the side there was 240 volt and 120 volt power. Yeah, and here you'll notice um, the grate, grate that Chelsea loves. Uh, <laughs> and you'll notice how it really is, it's really nice though because it makes it very, very, very light in the tower and it is a lot easier to see and do things. Um, we already kind of passed it, but on each deck, we call them their hanging decks. And the way they're attached to the tower walls, it allows them to move a little bit because obviously the tower is going to flex and sway a little bit in the wind. Um, it has to. So that just kind of keeps tension off of those decks to be able to move along with the tower. And there you can see our uh, brakes. They're hydraulically driven and uh, they will clamp around that plate there and uh, will stop the everything from turning as it rotates into the wind. Now here, we are actually going up into the nacelle. Um, and when you get on the nacelle ladder, it's again, very, very important to clip off before you start climbing. When we stop the turbine, we have no way of knowing where that ladder is gonna end up and it does move when the nacelle moves. Um, so, like you can see when I look down, I'm very right there, very close to that ladder going all the way down. So, like I said, it's better safe than sorry. Here you can see our uh, main attachment point for all of our cables there with the Kellum's grips. And there is our auto luber that automatically lubes our yaw gear that will, the whole system will rotate around the tower with the three yaw motors off the side. 
And there to the left, it's kind of hard to see. It's a little dark back there, but that is actually a handbrake. Um, so there are times when we do have to lock out the hub. We have to go out there and check stuff out. And it's a little bit harder, a little interesting before the turbine is actually energized. Um, you basically have to do it all by hand. And there's a pumping mechanism on that brake that you just gotta, you gotta work it pretty good. And then here, the yellow controller here is the easy way to lock everything out. And there's actually a brake control on there. And then we can also yaw the turbine and then also pitch the blades. If they have a low wind day, we can pitch the blades slightly and allow that, help that uh, rotor come around and so we can uh, lock that out and then here is our chain hoist This allows us to bring all of our heavier gear up and down It's uh, not very much fun toting anything really more than 25 pounds. I would say makes that climb pretty long and Up and down control and an e-stop and there's a service disconnect there up on the top Yeah, like Justin said the uh the tool hoist is very, very nice, and again, during construction, it gets a little, it gets a little funky sometimes. Those bags get pretty heavy, and you don't have electricity to run that hoist, so it's very, very nice when we're doing maintenance. There's a e-stop on the uh, top box here. This is where all the brains, I guess, on the top section that Chelsea was talking about. This is where that would be located. Everything will come into here, and then go back down so yeah this just kind of gives you an all-around visual of the nacelle so I know you didn't get to see it on the ground but there's some pretty cool stuff and here's our uh, safety gate for around the back tool hatch um, set this up so no one accidentally walks in and then uh, before we go ahead and actually open anything up we'll go ahead and tie off there's some tie off points up above you can see right behind carrier there it's a little bit of a stretch as you're uh, going down to open that back tool hatch up <laughs> but uh, as you'll see here shortly it's quite a distance up here 265 feet it makes everything look a little bit smaller we have a cable attached to help us out pull that door open and you can see down below there Chelsea's actually down there you can barely see her and then that's that y'all gear that we were talking about before and here uh, getting ready to go out the uh, top hatch here so we want to make sure that we go ahead and tie off and there's also another tie off point here on the instrumentation rack that Chelsea had mentioned there was our anemometer which will give us our wind speed and wind direction And you know, we just wanted to leave you guys at the end of the tour with this great view on a beautiful day you can see, you can see for miles. Right in front of you, you can see a couple more turbines that we have put up for ball. Um, on the other side of those trees, you can't really see them, but we have two turbines that directly supply Whirlpool. And as we pan around, you will see four more turbines that we have going on. And then right there, you can see one of the rig points for the rotor, whenever that's flown up as a whole piece, like Chelsea had mentioned, we put all three blades on, instead of how some other contractors do one at a time once the hub is already attached. There's the two for ball. And then off there to the far right, just underneath that blade, is two of them for valve film. There you can see our leading and trailing edge of our blades. Which those edges are obviously what help the blades really catch the wind. These blades are great design for, doesn't take very much wind to get them going. And that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for coming with us.